Welcome back to that God Power channel. This is the channel where we're going to unlock the God Power laying dormant on the inside of you. But first, today, and what we've been doing today, is finishing up the book of Matthew. So, I've dropped already two videos today, um, chapter 25 and chapter 26. And this one is going to be about chapter 27. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, I highly, highly suggest that you go back and watch them because it's a lot of good, it's like a good build up, you know what I'm saying? You should watch the story just build up. But um, today we're going to be breaking down chapter 27. So thanks for joining me. Um, make sure you pay attention. You might get something from it. And uh, happy Halloween again <laughs> for the third time. So <clears throat> chapter 27 starts off. Um, very early in the morning, the elders, they were gathering together and they were laying the plans down on how to put Jesus to death. And they bound him and then they took him to Pilate, which was the Roman governor. And when Judas realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with a whole lot of remorse. He took all his silver back to the leading priests and the elders. And he's like, I have sinned. And then he was like, I've betrayed an innocent man. And then they were like, uh, so that's your problem, bro. And then Judas threw all of his coins in the temple and then he ran out and he hanged himself. And that's that's pretty dark. But you know what I'm saying? We all knew that that was going to happen or something bad was going to happen to him. But either way, the leading priest picked up the coins and they're like, it wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury since it was payment for murder. So what they used the money for was to buy a potter's field and they made it a cemetery for all the foreigners that came through that land. They nicknamed it the Field of Blood. And that actually fulfilled a prophecy, which the prophecy said they took 30 pieces of silver, the price at which he was valued by the people of Israel, and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. So that was a prophecy that came true right then. And again, if you would have uh, listened to all the other uh, chapters of Matthew, Jesus has been fulfilling prophecies the whole time. Like, that's literally the, the reason why he's here. He's like fulfilling the prophecies. But going on, he was standing before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And the governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? And then Jesus was like, you said it. But when they made accus accusations against you, you remained silent. He's like, don't you hear all these charges they're bringing against you? And Jesus didn't even respond to that. So every year during Passover, Pontius Pilate would release one prisoner um, to the crowd. Anybody that they wanted, though. So the crowds were outside and, and Pontius Pilate went out to them. He was like, which one do y'all want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, the one who's called the Messiah? And Pilate knew that Jesus was an innocent dude. He, he knew that the religious leaders had arrested him just out of envy. As a matter of fact, his wife had sent him a message. And it was like, leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. So Pontius Pilate knows that Jesus is good. The wife of him, like, they, they all know that Jesus is good. But still, they're just like, you know, let's leave it up to the people. So in the crowd, they have the elders out there in the crowd, and they're persuading people to ask for Barabbas, like who's a robber, to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. And so the crowd, you know what I'm saying, people are sheeple. You feel me? The crowd said they wanted Barabbas. And Pilate asked them, then what should I do with Jesus? Who's called the Messiah. The crowd was like crucify him. And Pilate saw that he was not getting through to any of them. And a riot was developing. So he washed his hands before the crowd and said. Hey I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is all yours. And the people yelled back. We'll take the responsibility for the death. And we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them, and then he ordered Jesus flogged and then whipped with a lead tip, and he turned them over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. So the soldiers took Jesus back to their headquarters, 
and they called out their entire regiment and they stripped Jesus and then they put him in a scarlet robe. And then they put a thorn branches together and they they, put, they tied it into a crown and put it on his head. And then they placed a reed stick in his right hand and acted like it was a scepter. And they knelt before him, mocking him, taunting him, talking about, hell, king of the Jews. And then they spit on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. And when they were tired of mocking him, they took off his robe and put on his old clothes again, and then they led him away to be crucified. So literally, these dudes just really did not have anything else to do, and they wanted to just fuck with Jesus on like really bad, and this was very, very bad. But again, Jesus was taking it because he knew that he is fulfilling the scripture. So along the way, um, as the guards took him to be crucified, they ran into this dude named Simon, and he was from this place called Cyrene. And the soldiers forced Simon to carry Jesus' cross because Jesus had been carrying it for so long and Jesus was tired. So they forced this dude Simon to carry it. And Simon was carrying it for Jesus. And they went to this place um, called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Um, and then the soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with some bitter gall. But when Jesus tasted it, he was like, oh, 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 and he refused to drink it. So Jesus is beat down, and at this point, the soldiers start nailing him to the cross. Um, and then after that, he's, after he's nailed to the cross, they start gambling for his clothes, like throwing dice. They're playing craps for his clothes, like throwing dice for his clothes. Um, they sat around, and then they kept guard there, and then they had a sign put on top of the cross, um, announcing that he was the, the, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. And they were pretty much mocking him with the sign. And there was two people crucified with him. Um, they were two revolutionaries, uh, one on the right and one on the left. And then there were people that were passing by shouting and shaking their heads and mocking them. And they're like, look at you now. You said you're going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the son of God... Save yourself. Come down from that cross. And Jesus, you know what I'm saying, he kept his head through it. And the leading teachers of religious law and the elders, they also mocked Jesus. They're like, he saved others, but he can't save himself. So is he the king of Israel? Is he? Let him come down from that cross right now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries crucified to the right and the left with Jesus, they ridiculed him in the same way. Like they were, everybody was just picking on Jesus at this point. And then at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. And then about at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud, loud voice. Eli, Eli, Lema, I can't read the last word. But it means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And then some people who are walking by, they must they misunderstood what Jesus was saying. And they thought he was calling out to Elijah, Eli, Eli. Another one of the bystanders went and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink it. But the rest of them, they're like, yo, wait, 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 wait. Let's see whether Elijah comes to save him or not. And at that moment, Jesus shouted out. And he released the spirit at that time. So basically, that's the time that he died. And uh, the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth started shaking and rocks. And then the, uh, the whole earth split apart. And tombs were opened. And the bodies of many godly men and women were raised from the dead. And they left the cemetery. And they went to the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared before people. <laughs> the Roman officers and the other soldiers of the crucifixion, they were terrified by the earthquakes and everything else that happened. They said, oh my God, this man is truly the son of God. So Jesus had enough and he let the spirit out. And when he did, like the whole earth responded and it went crazy. And people kind of like woke up like, whoa. And like especially the people that, that were at the crucifixion, they were definitely like, Awake at that moment, knowing that that was God. 
Also at the crucifixion, there were some women that came from Galilee to watch Jesus and to take care of Jesus. And basically, I called them the Mary gang because it was Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, another Mary, and then uh, two of the disciples, uh, their moms. So in the evening time, a rich dude, his name was Joseph, and he was a follower of Jesus. He asked Pontius Pilate for Jesus's body. And Pilate was like, okay. And he released the body to Joseph. And Joseph wrapped him up in fine linen and placed him in a brand new tomb carved out of rock. And then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Uh, And the Mary gang was sitting there watching from a distance. The next day on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. So basically all this happened on Friday. And then on the Sabbath, the leading priests and the Pharisees went to go see Pilate. And they were like, Sir, we remember what that deceiver said while he was still alive. He said, After three days, I will rise from the dead. So, we request that you seal that tomb until the third day. And this will prevent anyone from trying to steal the bodies like his disciples and then telling everybody he was raised from the dead. If that happened, it will be worse off than we were at first. So Pilate was like, take the guards and secure it the best you can. And so they sealed the tomb off and they posted guards there to protect it. So the Pharisees and the religious leaders and the elders, they were pretty much scared that their scam was about to get figured out. And they didn't want like, or they didn't want like Jesus to even resurface. They wanted him to be dead and done with because... They, they felt like if the disciples would even lie and say that his body came back alive, then people would still believe in him. And they didn't want that because they just felt like he was deceiving everybody. And so um, they tried to seal his tomb off the best they possibly could. And uh, that's the end of chapter 27. I mean, most people know the story about what happens, but if you don't know the story, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'll wait till chapter 28 comes out, and that's the final chapter. Thanks again for rocking with me. If you like what you heard, click the like button. Hopefully it touched somebody. Hopefully it opened somebody's eyes up. uh, And hopefully you enjoyed it. And then the last hopefully that I have for you is that, that you're having a beautiful day. And that you remember that you got that God power. Tapping the sources, calling the vibes. I just thank God I'm alive. I just thank God that I'm fly. I just thank God for my guns. Every night, we never stay up in my spirit. I know that you.